stuff. Theo, thanks for joining us. Run us through the latest at Mundoro. Looking forward to it. Copper and gold in Serbia. Uh, absolutely. Thanks very much for inviting us. I have a few screens up, so if you see me looking straight up, it's because the, uh, the screen locations. Um, well, first of all, thanks everyone for, for listening to our story. Um, if you're not familiar with Mundoro, we are a generator. And just as I start off, uh, just remember forward-looking statements, expiration is a risky business, and uh, we'll do our best to kind of walk you through what we do. Why we think it's important to consider, you know, equities like Mondoro now specifically is really the very strong commodity market. We are definitely focused on copper and gold, but we focus in areas where there are historic mining camps, um, and that helps a great deal in terms of once these assets uh, can develop a deposit that they can easily be brought on stream. We also look at strategic uh, packages. So we really try and cluster our portfolio around uh, these mining complexes, and then really just look along the trend and see where there is further potential for more uh, discovery potential. And, and I'll kind of walk you through that um, as we're going through the presentation. We focus on a partner model, uh, which means that we bring in partners to fund the exploration programs. Uh, we, we generate cash, uh, not only through operator fees, but also payments directly to the company. Uh, and we've been doing that for the last five years. We have a very good institutional support in the company, around 55%. And uh, as many of you who are focused to Europe know that ESG and CSR programs are actually extremely important. So those have been a guiding principle in everything that we do. Okay, so just to kind of give you orientation of where in the world we are. So Eastern Europe, Serbia and Bulgaria is where we're focused today. We do have a, a legacy project in Mexico and a small investment project in, uh, in China, but those are really um, off, off the kind of uh, outside of the portfolio. The real focus is Europe today. In Europe, as many of you uh, probably know, actually has a very important mineral trend, uh, mineral belt, the Tethian belt, and specifically the Western portion. So that's not as explored as North America and South America, and that creates an interesting opportunity. So basically the way that our model runs is we generate um, packages of projects uh, around these strategic areas that are established mining camps. Uh, we focus primarily on copper and gold, and then we partner those out. So we bring in partners. We really uh, talk to partners about what kind of uh, projects they're looking for. Uh, we see what in the portfolio works. Sometimes we actually enter into strategic alliances with partners um, in order to identify assets specifically within their criteria. And then by doing that, we are a part owner in the project and we bring in uh, cash into the company through operator fees, option fees, advance royalty payments, milestone payments. It could be a direct sale of an asset and of course the lucrative NSR royalties. So for those of you who um, do invest in the royalty sector, this model is somewhat different. Royalty companies primarily use their balance sheet in order to get into assets. It tends to be a bit more competitive because they do tend to focus more on development and producing assets. Whereas the royalty generator model, which is what Mandoro is focused on, really it's that genesis of the ideas, putting together a package creating those targets, bringing the partners to those properties. And then as a result, you know, we um, collect cash and those NSRs. And if even one of these projects uh, ends up uh, an established mine in the future that can meet the criteria of our partners, those can be extremely lucrative royalties, which then of course, the royalty companies themselves would be highly uh, interested in. So, how is it that we run our business? You know, we we um, there is quite a gambit of companies now in this space. Uh, we are currently one of the lowest in terms of GNA, so which means that the majority of the money that uh, we do generate or that we raise goes into the ground for generating ideas. Uh, we also have uh, generally a higher exploration budget as a result of the size of our partners. So we spend around three point eight to four million. Uh, consistently over the last three years, whereas some oftentimes the peers will spend uh, just around 2 million. 
And that basically results in about 9,000 meters of drilling, which is you know, significantly higher than you might see in some of the peers. Uh, despite all those great uh, metrics, we are trading at below our peers. So that's a great opportunity for someone wanting to get exposure into the generator model. When you, I'm not going to go through this slide in detail. This is available on our website. But basically, what you'll see here is that there's quite a lot of companies now uh, in this space, and the juniors really mo focus more on generating those assets, whereas mid-tier and seniors really do focus on buying royalties. So, in terms of Mandoro, uh, our capital structure is very good. This is. Uh, a clear reflection of the generator model. You know, you do not need to go out into the marketplace raising large amounts of money and have significant uh, share dilution, which can obviously affect shareholders' ability to make a return. So as a result, you know, we've, we've actually been public since 2003 and we have 100 million shares outstanding, uh, never done a rollback. And that uh, is very attractive for a lot of our shareholders, very well institutionally held. Um, and that's primarily because of the business model and the exposure to the commodities and the wide gambit of opportunities. You know, it's interesting, for example, Valet is one of our partners in our programs and uh, Valet made a significant discovery, uh, you know, over a billion tons in Indonesia of a copper porphyry system that's probably gonna end up being one of the uh, major minds in the industry. And not a lot of people have heard about that project. And it's because Valet's market cap size is tremendously large. So those kind of discovery opportunities in a junior would have tremendous uh, equity value. And I think that's one of the advantages of working with generators or investing in generators is that you get exposure to large company programs that can have tremendous value creation, but you get it through a tight capital structure of the junior company. So uh, the team has um, been established uh, and been working together for the last 10 years, uh, really focused on Eastern Europe. Uh, our chief geologist is uh, Richard Jamalita. Yasin Khrushchev is our exploration manager in the region. We've got a great data manager uh, with Damien, technical advisors. Uh, I'm sure everybody has heard of Richard Silito, uh, Lee Rankin on structural, and Richard Moores on generative, and uh, Alan Riles on metallurgy. So it's a really good team that um, has worked very well for the last 10 years together. Now, I'm not going to go through a great deal on the copper market because I'm sure your investors are savvy based on uh, the newsletters you put out. Um, but obviously, you know, we're working in a copper deficit market uh, that's obviously having a positive impact on copper prices. Uh, and as a result, I think actually for the first time in quite some time, uh, we're actually seeing an equally shared opportunity of upside in both the copper and gold equities. Uh, copper has been significantly undervalued, um, or the copper equities have been significantly undervalued compared to historical levels where they have been when copper price is in and good uh, support for uh, copper fundamentals um, have existed. So it's an interesting time to be in the space. And not only that, but it it's actually a very copper driven um, exploration market. We've never seen so much demand in copper deposits before. And that's, um, I don't think, going to change anytime soon. And certainly getting involved with teams that have a lot of experience in the copper market is, is going to serve investors well. Um, so here's where we are in Eastern Europe. We're in Timic uh, primarily, and that's really going to be the focus of today's conversation. We're also in Panagorishta and the Rhodops in Bulgaria, and we're really focused on that upper Cretaceous portion of the belt where we really have seen the majority of the copper porphyries. Um, Timic, you know, is one of the kind of the golden uh, meccas of the region. It's got a tremendously uh, well endowed uh, copper district. About 4 billion tons of porphyries have been discovered here with significantly much more potential uh, available. So as a result, you know, we've got a partnership with Valet and with Jogmec today, and we have projects that are available for optioning with additional partners. Um, as we move on into the Panagorishta region, which is really the next kind of important porphyry district in Eastern Europe and certainly uh, Southeastern Europe, uh, along that belt, uh, Panagorishta, you know, has probably about uh, around 2 billion tons, uh, a billion and a half. So it's a smaller, um, certainly smaller endowed than Timic, but 
uh, still has very interesting potential, has not been explored nearly as much as Timic, and that's the opportunity. We have a project here that uh, we are in the process of negotiating with the government on signing a contract at the Radka mine, and that one looks very familiar to the Chelopech mine when you look at resources and grade. And then the next area is, of course, the road ops. The road ops are an extremely uh, interesting area. It's an emerging area, uh, but certainly don't have the same uh, porphyry um, knowledge or exploration that Panagorshta and Timic does. So specifically, uh, which projects are we working on today with Valet? Uh, we've got a series of targets along the um, Timic projects that they are earning into. Those are identified here in this slide. I think the takeaway here is uh, really to focus that drilling has been going on uh, all year. There's gonna be more drilling in the second half of the year. We've just finished the geophysics program. So that's gonna be important news flow for the company in the second half of the year. On top of that, uh, we've, uh, optioned out an additional two properties to Valet. Uh, this year, we are in the process of completing that joint venture. And so we expect to start exploration here in the fourth quarter of the year. And again, that's catalyst for more drilling in the Timic region. So that's an extremely important thing for generators is that their partners are constantly drilling. And when their partners are drilling, that's the opportunity for more discoveries. Um, the next project area is Borsko, uh, which is also in Timic. That's just west of the Bohr mines. And this one here is a JV between uh, Jogmec and Mandoro. Jogmec is uh, the Japanese arm for the Japanese government for investment in commodities uh, abroad. Uh, this is an area where we've made an interesting uh, lithocap discovery at depth, which we believe uh, is on top of an intact porphyry system and requires deeper drilling in order to prove that potential. So that's something that we're working on uh, in the second half of the year. Um, this area is available for joint venture and optioning out. It's the Zelesnik license to the north, and it's a, uh, a you know, a porphyry system in the west zone that's been identified, partially drilled, requires more drilling, and the east zone is a really interesting intrusive that's come into contact with limestones and is creating some uh, very nice um, high-grade zones that uh, need further drilling for delineation. And then the new portfolio project is GT7. It is in the tertiary portion of uh, the Tethian belt, uh, not as well um, explored this portion of the belt, as you can see that from the license licenses that are in Timic versus on the tertiary magmatic complex. Um, it has very interesting potential. And what's fascinating is that, you know, you can walk across the ground and see um, stockwork veining from a porphyry right on surface. And that's not, uh, those types of opportunities certainly don't exist in Timic. Most of the new exploration there is definitely undercover. So very interesting uh, project and some uh, a project that we think we can joint venture this year. And then just kind of quickly talking about environmental, social and governments. I think this is important to recognize that Eastern Europe has very well established mining communities. Those are areas that uh, when explorers learn how to work well with the local communities. It can be a very uh, good relationship. And certainly over the last 10 years, we've had a lot of success in the region with these types of programs. And um, you don't see the type of issues that you would see in other parts of the world. So um, as a summary, you know, great portfolio, strong partners, they're actively drilling. There's gonna be a lot of news flow from those programs in the second half of the year. The generative team is actively also generating further projects. There'll be more announcements for us about new areas that we're gonna be exploring. And we're still undervalued compared to our peers. So there's a great um, opportunity there. Fantastic, Theo, I do have to jump in now. Unfortunately, I do appreciate it. And we do have questions in the chat and I do have a couple of questions for you as well, actually. So